Upon the viewing of this video, the following symptoms may be experienced. Happiness, satisfaction, demonic beings crawling around in your skin, bedtime trumpets, a new understanding of things you shouldn't know, complete paralysis, roots attaching to your bones, parasites scratching at your skull, finger spasming, eye twitching, an overwhelming sense of dread, a complete dismantling of your body, an agonizing death, and the most prevalent symptom, a lingering cough. The Boyd One Phenomenon is an analog horror video uploaded on March 17, 2024, created by Dr. Nowhere. It revolves around a horrific figure called the Boyd One, or Finn228, who appears in an episode of a discontinued series which was never meant to rerun. 530 people viewed this broadcast and would experience the consequences. Finn228 acts as a cognito hazard of sorts, though it doesn't seem the problem is with looking at it, but with allowing it to complete its message which is likely why the audio of the clip shown for context was heavily altered and cut short. Though this is besides the point, upon viewing the footage, people were unable to keep the image of the Boyd One out of their head and experience extreme paranoia and anxiety, and it only gets significantly worse from there. Victims in later days would randomly experience a suedo coma, a complete inability to move or communicate while still being conscious. The Boyd One will also watch over you for the rest of your life. Even though this sounds really bad, I want to say the details previously mentioned could be ranked amongst the worst. But there's two more important details. A victim of the broadcast before he was completely paralyzed claimed the face was living in his brain and feeding on his spine. With how Finn 228 behaves, I'm inclined to believe this isn't a lie. And I'm no medical professional, but that sounds painful. Though, the consistency of the spine feeding is unknown. The second point, the victim shown appears to be taken care of. But there were 508 other people affected. How many of those people had no one taking care of them? Even if they were alone for only a few days, they would slowly become extremely dehydrated, constantly thirsting for water, but having no way to access it, while the Boyd One watches over them. Even if the Boyd One has a way to prevent dehydration or even death from happening, not being able to move for decades while an ominous presence watches over you is terrible. But honestly, it's a tame in this video. Cause the manifestation of my being in the future. You will be asleep and dead. I will be there and watch over you. When you wake, you will not be able to move any part of you. When your doctors eventually find you, they will not see me. But you will, and I'll see you too. Forever, I'll see you. Tangy virus, a series that details the nature and progression of the formerly mentioned virus. It's called a virus, though it's more parasitic in nature. More on that later. The start of the series revolves around a doctor named Dr. Julie Williams, who documents her research of mutated and mutating organisms, as well as her job. The initial main conflict is with her and the local government. Everyone understands these mutations are a problem, but the local government doesn't want tourists to stop flowing in, so nobody but them knows. Though Dr. Williams is insists on letting the public know, so they do the most rational and reasonable option possible. They poison her with the Tangy virus. Oh God, I am infected with the Tangy virus. And this was very clearly not a one-man plan. I immediately left. As I drove away, the staff at the entire building followed me to the parking lot and watched me as I drove away. They were all smiling. How can I be so gullible? Dr. Williams takes up a job at a veterinarian's office with the intent to hold off the virus. She uses anti-parasite drugs and chemotherapy used for dogs in an attempt to kill the virus, which appears to be slightly successful at first despite her losing 40 pounds, losing all her hair, and being covered in sores. She survives about a year until she makes probably the best decision she could make concerning the virus. The rest of the series shows conflicting narratives about drinking the water, 
which is likely a battle between the local government as well as the infected populace versus everyone else until the great flood happens which nobody likes talking about though fortunately there's a tape oh yeah the virus can apparently mutate you into a giant amphibious creature which is strange but that may be one of the less torturous things the virus can do to you the initial symptoms of the tangy virus are unpleasant, but are common in many real world diseases. Symptoms include itchy throat, skin rash, irritated eyes, nausea, diarrhea, and likely other undisclosed symptoms. But then a biopsy reveals the true horror of this virus. A tumor is found near their spine, which is revealed to be filled with worm-like organisms, which are described as aggressive. The worms are described as being birthed with the way birthed and hatched are being used. It makes the virus seem more like a parasite. The virus is reported to gravitate towards the nervous system, which is what makes this virus so terrifying. It takes full control of your body while you're still conscious, and it's not an ordinary virus. It enjoys suffering, to the point where they choose to torture Dr. Williams for almost a year over spreading and reproducing, which makes Dr. Williams' case so much worse. The virus was messing with her. It delayed its takeover just to torture her. What is probably the worst symptom of the virus is how it keeps the victim alive. Even if they desire death, you just have to live in a body you don't own anymore. Until something not related to the disease eventually kills you. I doubt it's awful in terms of pain for the rest of your existence. But to just not own your body for decades sounds awful. Gemini Home Entertainment, one of the most infamous and well-respected analog horror series, and if I'm right about a certain thing, home to one of the worst deaths in analog horror, maybe one of the worst deaths imaginable. If you don't know, spoilers by the way, the series plot revolves around a plane destroying creature that is heading its way towards Earth, and while it's heading over, creatures are slowly taking over Earth and humanity, the most prevalent creature of which being the wood crawlers, creatures who consume place, and most important to this video, plant seeds in humans, particularly while they're vulnerable. These seeds cause something called deep root disease, and don't let these flowers fool you. It has nothing to do with flowers. Nothing about this disease is pretty, though it all starts with a seed. Once the seed has been planted in your skin, it will begin to swell and grow until it reaches bone, where the root will spread freely. What it does from here will be discussed in a minute, but even before anything really happens, the disease psychologically harms the victim. Seeing how signs of having it can include memory loss and having no dreams. All of that and unrecognizable smells. But when it reaches bone, everything goes downhill. The horror of this statement really emphasizes this. Even during this stage, the victim's mind continues to get worse. More specifically, overtaken. While the victims appear to know what's going on, the victim's body is slowly overtaken and in a way, replaced over months. The root grows and grows. And where do you go when there's not enough space? Outward seemingly taking over the victim's bones or lack of with it. Even though their mind is being taken over, there's no way that's not excruciating. Whether they're all there in the head is questionable, but more on that later. The actual horror of this disease can be seen towards the end, with the victim Barry Johnson, the one who answered the door in a former episode, has fully lost all bodily structure, yet he still seems to be spasming. This is where you can tell mind overtaking is taking place, as he doesn't respond in a normal, human way. example of the final stages of deep root disease can be found in home invasion help towards the end, where a random victim can be found sitting in a desk chair, seemingly still alive, or at least attracted to the light. 
but regardless, it seems they suffered the same fate. But to circle back, do they experience the pain of this disease? The cases previously mentioned are questionable, but in the newest video, Old Bones, the victim is clearly shown to feel every ounce of what's happening to him. What happens up to this point is basically a man named Glenn A. Arthur is visited by who he believes are heavenly visitors, who make a deal with him. By this point, I think you can expect that they're not heavenly visitors. What's in it for Glenn Arthur is unclear, potentially something to do with the camp he runs. But he accepts this deal, which initially appears not detrimental at all. But after five years, he breaks the deal by what appears to be shooting a bear, which is likely spawned a virus, or more specifically, the wretch. What happens to him, I find to be one of the most disturbing moments in the series. Then it zooms in on his brain, to show it to be the only unharmed, and the worst sense possible, part of his body. The journal entries later show that he likely survived a long time after surviving one of the most torturous fates in analog horror. probably the most visually gruesome fate in analog horror lies. The majority of the video is of a tape, which really reminds me of Real Sleep of Local 58, that is said to be for one single person named Charlotte Melgren, though it appears something has been blacked out. To add context to what happens later, Charlotte Melgren is just an ordinary person who founded a dog shelter, not out of some evil desire or anything, just to help dogs. The tape consists of an almost brainwashing of sorts, meant to unlock the viewer's mind's deepest energy potential. Judging from the rest of the tape, the intentions of the creator are definitely not pure. The tape slowly gets more and more extreme and distorted as the video goes on. The video switches between the tape and security cam footage of Charlotte's kennel, who motion has been detected by security cameras. Charlotte initially dismisses this and the security system company's offers to send the police, as she has gotten multiple false alarms before. But the thing is, those weren't false alarms. And this proves to be her detriment as she feels comfortable leaving her home and going over to the kennel to check on the dogs. What she notices the dogs are completely still, which she ponders until this thing, called a kennel stalker, gets in. The man on the phone with her desperately tries to get her to leave, and she does try, but she runs into the kennel stalker which knocks a flashlight out of her hands. She tries to get out another way, but somehow, all the doors and possible exits are just gone. Charlotte does manage to escape from the creature to a place which I assume is the basement, as that's where she's found. She does manage to lock the door, but it proves useless. This creature has some sort of flesh manipulation powers, and potentially even reality bending powers, seeing how it completely removed the doors. The kennel stalker uses its meat bending powers in what is a horribly gruesome way, gruesome enough for me to lightly censor it just in case. From what can be seen, her arms are terribly broken, but everything just down, besides from her also terribly broken left leg, is covered by the flesh dogs, which are apparently dogs from the clinic that fused to her. To describe the rest of what's going on, None of her organs are where they're supposed to be, maybe besides from the heart and brain. Charlotte herself seems to also be mutating herself into some dog-like being, which makes this fate, and I mean fate as it's unclear if she dies from this, so much worse is that it seems pretty clear from the screaming that she is very conscious during this, potentially even the dogs too. I don't want to watch it a tenth time, so the video will be in the description for you to watch. But this is arguably the worst fate I've seen in analog horror, at least for now. You look like a discombobulated philosophical-